Hey, this is Jeff, and I just wanted to make this little video to welcome you to Master Coach University and also to provide you with a guide to uh, not just your first steps into the university as a new student, but also this is your guide to the immersion trainings that occur within Master Coach University. So, in this video, we're going to cover what to expect as you start the university and as you begin your uh, first immersion training. We'll also clarify the three different coaching disciplines that you learn within these three immersion trainings. And then we'll cover what to do before your first immersion training actually begins. So let's start with just what to expect. Um, it's, I think that as you get started in anything that's important to you, expectations are uh, are really create the results that we get out of a process and uh, if your expectations are f are well tuned to get the results that you want then uh, you get results if they're not well tuned then uh, it can be disastrous so uh, let me give you an example if uh, if you're thinking about starting a new job let's say and your expectations are way too high. You're thinking it's going to be easy. You're thinking that you're going to have uh, uh, this huge bonus at the end of the first month. And you think that uh, everybody that you work with is just going to be perfect and easy to work with. And it's just going to be effortless. You can take naps on the job. So your expectations are way too high, right? Um, and you have a normal month, a normal first month on the job. There's all sorts of challenges that show up, and you don't make a million dollars the first month. Well, if that level of uh, expectation that you have is going to create a ton of disappointment, and you might even slack off so much that you get fired, or you might even just want to quit ultimately. But no matter what, you're not going to be having a very good time because those expectations were so high, and you're dealing with that disappointment if nothing else. Now let's look at the other side of the coin. If you go to that new job and your expectations are it's going to suck, you're going to hate everybody there, you're going to go broke, they're not even going to pay you probably, uh, and it's going to be too hard, the work is going to be too hard, it's going to be impossible for you to do, and every minute of it you're not going to have a very good time. Well, how do you think you're going to act the first day of work? How do you think that you're going to feel as you meet new people? Well, yes, you may be pleasantly surprised at times. That's a possibility. But also, you're probably going to prepare to be disappointed. You're going to pre prepare not to do very well. And so your expectations are going to be so low that ultimately you're going to treat others, treat yourself, and treat your work in a way that might also get you fired or have you uh, uh, not enjoying your time there and have you really unhappy just because you're looking for those disappointments. You're expecting them, so you almost create them. So uh, having going into that new job with kind of a no expectations attitude, uh, an expectation that you don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be something you can handle. It's not all going to be great, but no matter what, you're going to grow from it, and your your expectations are carrying you through with things that you truly can influence, at least if not control. Then that gives you tons of power. It also gives you tons of uh, of positive expectations to create good experiences. But the bottom line is it also set you up to operate and act in a way during that new job that uh, you're enjoying it and that you're creating great results and you're uh, causing others to enjoy you being there as well. So expectations make a big difference. So let's talk about a little bit about what to expect in uh, this process of just getting started in Master Coach University with your first eight-week immersion training. Well, the first thing is that there will be some paperwork and tuition arrangements that you've probably already uh, worked out to a certain extent, but, uh, but sometimes there's communications that, that happen there. So uh, these first steps are very s fairly simple, but there, are, there is a lot of paperwork to take care of, so be prepared for that. Um, also, you'll be taking your, uh, your assessment. If you haven't already taken it, you want to make sure you... Uh, uh, have access to that and you take your assessment and the assessment takes somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes depending on uh, you know how quickly you go through each section and that'll all be online. Also you'll have several orientations that are important. You'll have an orientation call 
Uh, also, there are several orientations that happen during what we call orientation week as well. In addition to that, you're going to receive your materials that are associated with the immersion training that you're going to take, whether it's your first, second, or third immersion training. Uh, those materials will come to you either virtually or the physical materials depending on the specific enrollment options you took on within Master Coach University. But you'll be really focusing in on and majoring in, so to speak, just one of these disciplines. So you'll have the materials that support you with that, the books, the CDs, the quick reference cards, the CD-ROMs, uh, the, the iPad data, or the iPod data, that is, or the, uh, in, in your iPod, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, scheduling for orientation week. Uh, so uh, before orientation week starts, you're going to hear from uh, somebody on my staff. Uh, chances are it'll be via email, and they'll let you know uh, when the orientation calls are. And you want to make sure that you're on those calls. Uh, very, very important because during orientation week, not only is that a time when we go through all the complexities of the training, but in addition to that, uh, we also have our first uh, call for each discipline. Uh, you can't uh, help us make sure that you can make all the calls if you're not on that orientation and preliminary call during orientation week. Very, very important that you're on those calls and you'll see that in the emails you receive. So that's a little bit about what to expect before things get rolling uh, logistically and in terms of what you'll be doing uh, as well. Now let's cover the orientation process. Now there's a bunch of stuff that happens in the orientation process really to support you in getting clarity uh, about how this is going to go because these immersion trainings are fairly sophisticated. Make sure that uh, you break through any overwhelm early on, any confusion, that you get all your questions answered. So first of all, there's going to be a one-on-one -on -one orientation call that you'll have. And that's really to give you a chance to get a nice overview of Master Coach University, but then as well to help you tailor your own personalized syllabus to what's most important for you to get from Master Coach University, as well as covering the immersion training schedules. That one-on-one -on -one orientation call is also meant to really answer any burning questions that you have even before you get into your first course within the university. Then in each immersion training there is an orientation week and it happens the week before week one of that immersion training. And in orientation week there is a general orientation call and this just covers the basics of immersion trainings in general. This is a call that it's great to attend. You don't have to. We'll post a recording of it. But it does cover just overall what happens in immersion trainings, gives you some details on immersion trainings in general. And then you'll also have a preliminary training session. And this you do need to attend in order to participate in that immersion training because in the preliminary training session, we actually look at everybody's schedules and make sure that every student within that immersion training can make every single training session in that immersion training because you can't miss any in order to successfully complete your immersion training. Also during orientation week you will receive your coach and client assignments uh, as well as some other preliminary materials to help you hit the ground running in your first week of your immersion training. Now there are three different coaching disciplines that are taught within the immersion trainings and each immersion training teaches one of these three disciplines. Thus we have three different immersion trainings. Now these three disciplines are situated throughout the year so you really can actually receive your Master Coach certification and complete all of your coursework within all three of these disciplines within one year. But you don't have to. If you want to do one or two in your first year and then complete the rest the following year you're totally free to do that. Just keep an eye on the schedule and make sure you RSVP for the immersion training that you want to participate in. And then just don't RSVP for any immersion training that you're not going to participate in in that particular year. The following year you'll receive the schedule for that year and then you can just plan out your participation in the remaining immersion training or trainings that you'll be taking the following year. 
So let's actually talk about these three disciplines, and I'll explain these three disciplines to you. So, uh, and, and by the way, you know, learning just one of these disciplines will give you tremendous power. You're just mastering one of them. And when you want to master something, you really got to narrow your focus and just study and immerse yourself in that. That's what we call it the immersion training anyway. So let's talk about accountability. This is the first discipline uh, I'm going to discuss with you. And uh, by the way, in each of these disciplines, I'm going to discuss several aspects of each discipline. The result that this discipline or that this type of coaching can create with their clients, the skills that it takes the, the, to uh, supply this uh, type of coaching, the natural uh, type of coach or the style of coach that generally is the best fit for this type of coaching. I'm going to cover the experience of doing this type of coaching. And then finally, I'm going to cover the experience of doing the training, what the train, what that specific training is like, because not just do different coaches are, are different coaches better in different disciplines and they have different results. They have different experiences doing the coaching after they've learned the discipline, but they also have literally have a different training. It's a different training, different experience uh, completely because you're on different training sessions, different content that you're learning, different skills you're mastering, and different types of coaching that you're actually practicing. So just about every part of the experience is quite different in each training other than the fact that you're still in a, 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 an eight-week immersion training. So let's start with the result that people produce in accountability. And the result is that you get your client into action. Accountability is all about action. That's it. The skill that it takes is that accountability coaches have the skill of getting people to do what they don't want to do. Now obviously somebody's taking some type of action every single day, but the action that most of your clients automatically take are the actions that they want to take, things they feel like doing, right? It's the stuff they don't feel like doing, the things that they don't want to do that they're not doing. And though that's the skill that you need to have is getting people to do what they don't want to do, whether they want to or not, not making them want it because there, there is always going to be something they don't want to do or they might want it one day and they don't want it another day. So the bottom line is you got that got to have that skill of getting people to do what they don't want to do. The type of person or the type of coach that generally has, uh, has the best um, results as a uh, accountability coach generally is a little bit more of the drill sergeant type. Somebody who's a little tougher, more intensity to them. They're comfortable with confronting their client on a regular basis because that a lot of that happens. This is where the disagreements happen. This is where the resistance goes on. This is where the client doesn't like you that much. They don't like you, but they like the result they get from you sometimes. Uh, at least when uh, when they're having this uh, type of coaching from you. So uh, so generally speaking, the more intense, the more dominant coaches are much uh, more comfortable with this area and they also produce better results in this area with the clients consistently with most clients in accountability. The experience of doing accountability sessions are much shorter sessions, usually 15 to 30 minutes long instant results because they take action you know if your clients are taking action they're gonna come back next week and tell you all about the great results that they got the um, uh, the sessions can be somewhat repetitive because a lot of times the uh, actions that your clients are not willing to do or that they're resisting or that they need to keep doing are the same actions so a lot of times you're just keeping them accountable for the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, week after week after week. And that can be somewhat repetitive, almost boring at times. But, uh, but you will enjoy the instant gratification that you get as a result of seeing your client produce measurable, real results in their life right away. Uh, and that, uh, that in and of itself uh, is probably one of the greatest rewards that you get as an accountability coach. And also, you know, it's just sometimes it can be fun just to challenge your client to, to know that you're pushing them forward. You can kick their butt a little bit. You know, that can be, that can be enjoyable at times, uh, or you can learn to enjoy it. Uh, and then finally, the experience of the training is our most rigorous training. I mean, really the way that one of the ways that we teach you uh, to be a great accountability coach is to provide you uh, with very, very rigorous and intense accountability coaching so I'll be I'll be providing that I'll be your drill sergeant so to speak and so as a person experiencing or a coach experiencing that level of intense accountability 
it will rub off on the clients that you're coaching at the time. Those things will go through you kind of like osmosis, so to speak. So you learn it by observing it happening and actually receiving it yourself somewhat. And the rigor that I supply is tremendous in this training simply to really give you an example of what happens there and what it's like to be on the other end. So you really can empathize with the clients that you're working with and you know what you need to do. Uh, to get those results as well with those clients because you've experienced it yourself you could pass it on to somebody else. The homework is not uh, tremendously long it's somewhere between two and four hours per week so uh, it's shorter homework. Uh, the homework is generally a little bit more rote memorization and learning dialogues things like that. Uh, there are some personal development oriented assignments that have to do with your own accountability and your own integrity building uh, building your own foundation for being somebody that can supply this type of accountability coaching. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, the homework uh, is, it is, uh, it is work. You know, this is not the super fun uh, homework. But it is not a tremendous amount of hours. As long as you put about two to four hours a week in, you should be in the ballpark of having gotten that homework uh, finished generally. Generally. Uh, again, uh, some coaches will tell me uh, that I am a little low on the estimates of time. So maybe you take that and you think three to five hours instead of two to four. I'm not sure. But, uh, but my, that's just my, the estimate that I would give you. This is the shortest homework uh, in the training. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as accountability. Let's move on to strategy. And let's start with the result. Strat strategy coaches... This is really where the magic happens and where uh, the strategic coaching occurs, of course, as a strategy coach. They're providing strategies. So they teach strategies in all areas of life, financial, career, uh, uh, professional, business, um, time management, emotional, relationship, um, health and fitness, um, uh, you, you name it, uh, in the wheel of life, so to speak. Uh, you'll learn strategies and be coaching people on those strategies, basically. So this is where you really provide the strategic guidance for a client. And then the second uh, result that a strategy coach produces is that they are, uh, they're the ones that provide the inner game changes and transformation directly going to the source. The emotion, the mindset, the thinking, the, the feelings, the spirit, the, the sources, uh, the law of attraction stuff the 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 inner game life coaching that can change any area in your life if you make those uh, great changes inside of you and your beliefs and your philosophy and how you feel and things like that so there's some tremendous inner transformation that a strategy coach can provide uh, if they're really producing the results a strategy coach should be able to produce the skill of a strategy coach or, uh, is they obviously they got to be a, a good teacher but in addition to that they're they got to be great detectives they need to be patient enough to sit with a client and listen to all the gray areas and all the different things that are going on in their mind ask the right questions and, and by deductive reasoning uh, and intelligence and intuition detect what's really going on diagnose what's happening in their emotions and their mindset and their focus their beliefs etc uh, look through the gray areas and find what matters. It's like a mechanic in a car would trying to figure out what's going on diagnosing. You would need to do the mechanics with the mechanics of someone's mind, basically. So you got to be an amazing detective. You got to be willing to think from that perspective. You got to be patient enough to think from that perspective and uh, willing to be intelligent in that uh, in that respect. So part of it's intuition, but part of it's just logic, reasoning, and and really being able to filter through what's going on it takes a lot of experience, a lot of practice, and a, a natural knack for this type of detective work as well. And also the other skill is just the caring, patience, and, and, and empathy and willingness to really move a client forward and transform them in their inner game. So you could call that empathy, if you will. The type of coach that generally is the best fit as a strategy coach is somebody who's a patient friend and supporter. Somebody really cares, wants to spend that time. Uh, you know, they're going to be a lot probably more mild than the natural accountability coach drill sergeant type. Uh, but uh, and and they doesn't mean they can't be intense. It just means that they're gonna need to take their time with somebody. And accountability coach usually has a sense of impatience in a way, which actually helps 
them and accountability. But in strategy, uh, it's a sense of taking their time with their client, really piecing through what's going on in their head and working it out, you know, unraveling some of these patterns and then shifting them when it's needed. And, and that's elegant uh, in terms and, and the, the willingness to be elegant in your communication, your diagnosis and doing elegant tactics uh, and techniques within your method is a big part of uh, the type of coach you need to be as a strategy coach. The experience of a strategy coach is that much longer sessions, usually around an hour or so, uh, the, exper the experience of using creative intuition, uh, creating emotional growth for your client, you'll actually go through emotional changes with your client as you guide them in these respects, and then, and then the results tend to take longer. They do tend to take longer because you're working on inner game stuff, not just taking action. You'll, you can still get your client to take action. It's just that uh, that's not the main focus. And so because of that introspective view, it can take you know six months to see a result from strategy calls. Uh, even if your client gets that eureka moment, they'll come back the next week or the next month or whatever, and their life is still the same externally speaking in terms of measurable results so it's just par for the course that's what happens uh, with strategy coaches and they're playing a little bit for more for a long-term type of result. so just be ready for that but it's a beautiful thing it's a very creative and fun process is never a dull moment because there's always something going on uh, in your uh, in your client that's new and that you can learn from uh, and uh, and it's a beautiful thing to connect with a client at that deep emotional level and really help them. They'll be so grateful to you for that, and you'll have friends and and uh, and and people that will follow your teachings for life if you really do this well. And then finally, the experience of the training uh, is very emotionally intense. It's not as rigorous as accountability, but emotionally intense because we're dealing with emotions during the training and during live training sessions, you'll actually be coaching somebody and they might burst into tears or they might get angry or things like that. And sometimes we're provoking for those uh, emotional responses to produce a change basically. So it's very emotionally intense, these uh, strat strategy trainings. And uh, f uh, five to seven hours of homework, uh, the, ho the good news about the homework is that is is very uh, usually generally fun homework because there's a lot of audios to absorb and you can uh, listen to them while you're in the car or cooking dinner or whatever. So uh, some of this time can be done, uh, can be handled or can be uh, uh, digested and, and, and gone through while you might be doing something else. Of course, you got to concentrate enough to hear the audio and, and, and learn the lessons, but uh, but a lot of it's just absorbing what's going on. There are definitely assignments that take time and energy uh, as well, but it's uh, a lot of this is enjoyable, and there's a lot of entertainment inside of the uh, audios and videos that you'll be going through in the homework as well. So that's a little bit about strategy as the discipline. Finally, let's go through the assessment discipline, and the result of assessment coaching it, it varies really because assessments we use assessments for every client that we work with. And what you learn in the assessment training is how to use assessments for just about anybody in any uh, particular application. So the application and the result can vary. Uh, ultimately, the result is that you create awareness for your client about themselves, about their strengths, weaknesses, etc., and it helps them to make better strategic decisions. So it's a little bit more on the strategy side, I, you might say, using and taking advantage of these visual cues, these visual assessments. Uh, to quickly ex or to accelerate the diagnostic process so you can in, instead of taking two hours to figure out what's going on with the client and diagnose and help them it takes 10 minutes or two minutes for that matter because you just glance at their assessment results ask them a question or two and bam you know what's going on so uh, so that really helps accelerate almost any result that you might get with a client uh, but again the results vary depending on the client you're working with a lot of the applications that we cover in assessment training are a corporate type of coaching business coaching uh, and uh, working with teams uh, and helping them communicate better working with a hiring manager to help them figure out who to hire and who not to hire uh, or to help them manage particular uh, employees let's say to help them manage better uh, to help business partners communicate and work together in a better way uh, a lot of consulting applications and training applications for corporate training are all inside of this. Uh, our, some of our partners that we've worked with have million dollar businesses based upon 
uh, just working with corporations using assessments. So if that's a big area for you, this might be uh, the training that you want to even do first, possibly. Even though the assessment coaching is not a coaching discipline per se, it's, uh, it is more of a technology you're learning to apply to the coaching skills you already have. Um, it, it sometimes can be the most important thing to learn, especially if you're going into corporate type of environments and you're going to coach and support in that area. It also su supplies you with a couple things. Number one, having assessments that have been used by every company in the Fortune 500 and the government gives you a calling card that proves your credibility when you're uh, certified in this area. So you can walk in and you don't have to say, well, gee, I'm a life coach because they're going to kick you out of the office. But if you come in and say, I have empirical assessments that have been used by GE and, and the U.S. military and, and uh, uh, Genentech and, and Shell Oil, and, and we use these to help you guys grow your business and, and help you uh, sustain better teams, etc., and you show them the assessment, they take the assessment, and they see that it's real and that's provable, that gives you tons of credibility beyond just about anything else you might be able to provide other than just real results for other clients that have referred you to them. So, uh, so it's a huge credibility builder and it gets your foot in the door uh, in these corporate environments. The second thing it does is it provides you with a passive income product because you can bring assessments into a company and have them use the assessments train the managers on how to manage using the assessments and hiring using the assessments and they just buy assessments from you then and you have passive income every month because they purchase assessments you don't have to do anything to provide those assessments it just goes to them you get a check every month uh, i've had uh, tens of thousands of dollars of passive income over the life of my business if not hundreds of thousands uh, just from uh, having uh, these assessment tools at my fingertips and having a team that's trained to provide them to their uh, corporate customers as well. So that's a few things that assessments provide beyond just uh, coaching, acceleration, and, and uh, uh, keys and clues to how you might need to coach your client. We do discuss and you do practice a ton of coaching during the assessment coaches training. It's just we're not specifically trying to give you some coaching technique or trick or method through which to help make a change or something like that. You're providing observations, you're giving people some basic coaching, uh, and you're using the assessment tool to help them guide themselves and create a deeper and wider awareness of themselves and their strengths and weaknesses. Hopefully that makes sense. The skill, again, anybody can use assessments. You just got to be willing to read and translate the graphs. Uh, it's more of a clinical uh, mindset is the type. Uh, and of course, the type varies depending on if you're using this uh, within a relationship coaching application which is one of the uh, applications you learn during the training or a career coaching application or family coaching, family counseling type of application or a corporate application as well. So it really depends on the application in terms of uh, what type of coach might be the best fit for that particular, uh, that particular uh, uh, type of coaching. Moving on to the experience of doing this. Again, this uh, can vary, of course, but it can be somewhat a little bit more sanitized than other types of coaching because you don't have to go as deep in order to know the answers because now you're just basically you're just looking at the graph and uh, explaining what the graph means and making a recommendation and you don't even have to do that while you're on the phone you can do that over email uh, I've coached probably hundreds of people without ever even meeting them through their managers and talking to their managers about what they need to provide in terms of coaching and management and, and support Two people, I just saw their assessment results. I never met them, never talked to them. And it was still very accurate coaching. So that was somewhat sanitized. A little bit more at arm's length, a little bit more clinical style that you can experience in the training and that you may even experience using these tools. So just realize, not as intense. And it's like the difference between somebody on, uh, somebody, uh, a doctor who's doing an operation who's really in the game face-to-face -face with a client and a doctor who's, let's say, a radiologist or an x-ray technician who's just looking at a picture of the client. We're getting the x-rays here, so you can step back from the client and really take a wider view. And ultimately, uh, it's uh, not quite as uh, intense, usually, uh, as a result of looking at that. And, and for that matter, because the client uh, sees things differently uh, because they're looking at the assessment rather than talking to you uh, in, in that deep kind of provocative way. 
so it can be a little bit more sanitized but the experience can it can be amazing because it's like the client sees that you're almost got a crystal ball that you're using to read them like you know uh transparently uh, and it really blows them away and it can connect you deeper with that client as well as a result it does speed up the coaching process put it this way um, and then finally experience of the training again less intense uh, because it's a little, a little bit more intellectual discussions here uh, we're a lot of times during the training we're not actually working with a live person we're working with a graph discussing the graph uh, there is still a lot of homework a lot of the homework is videos that you'll watch because this is a visual medium so we put uh, all the graphs and the different things that you'll be needing to learn and understand on a video so you can see the graph we discuss what it means and you make that connection much more quickly and then there's a lot of uh, just projects that you'll be doing you'll have a project where you'll actually find a team that's within our training or outside the training for that matter and uh, and you'll work with that team and you'll you'll coach that entire team run assessments on all of them all the people in that team uh, you'll have uh, uh, opportunities to do relationship coaching with a couple all sorts of different projects you'll be working on throughout the weeks of the eight-week immersion training for assessment so that's the assessment discipline those are the three disciplines so let's talk a little bit about what you're gonna need to do before the training some of the things that you want to think about doing before the training starts so you're gonna need to fill out your paperwork contact us to get that uh, you want to double check your tuition plan and eligibility of course um, you know people different students are on different tuition plans and uh, and therefore you just want to be aware of what your eligibility is to uh, to take the training uh, when you receive your materials etc a lot of times uh, if you just got enrolled or you just went through the enrollment process, you just registered, and it's just, a, let's say, three weeks before the training or something like that, you just want to make sure that everything is copacetic with uh, the uh, uh, administrative side of things um, and that, uh, that you know, in our books, we have that you're ready to roll uh, for the training. So just double-check that with our administrators and uh, make sure that you're uh, ready to go and we're going to get you your your assessments and your materials and everything you need and we'll have we'll be having you in the training we're expecting you to have you in the training as well so just be proactive about that and, and you should be fine then you're going to get an email that'll provide you a link to take your assessment if you already have assessment results you can provide those to us uh, but you want to take that assessment and then also you want to put your orientation sessions in your schedule, the one-on-one -on -one orientation as well as the general and preliminary training sessions that will occur during orientation week. So these will happen at different times, but you want to get this stuff in your schedule to make sure you can show up for it as well. And then uh, you're going to receive your materials, of course, after that. So review your materials as soon as you get them. Start your homework before the training starts. Uh, the reason I say this is because you know when you've got five hours plus of homework per week and we've all got busy lives uh, it's easy for that to get a, to get behind on that let's say and once you get behind uh, then all of a sudden doubling that number and doing 10 15 hours in one week of homework probably not gonna happen so if you start your homework you get ahead of the game you may not be able to do all of it because you're not in the training yet but if you start your homework and you try to get as much of it done as possible before the training, well, then you're ahead of the game. And then if you get behind, you're actually right on time. <laughs> you're right in, in tr on track with getting your coursework done before the end. So start your homework if at all possible. And then finally, extra credit. If you do have the extra time or the extra weeks before the training starts, and you are moving on that homework and you're doing well with that, go through the Quick Start program, specifically the High Caliber Coaching Code uh, program the videos and maybe do some of the homework in the high caliber coaching code the high caliber coaching code is a coaching basics co course uh, whereas the eight-week immersion training is advanced coaching I mean it's it's mastering a discipline now in in the high caliber coaching code you're not mastering any particular discipline you're just learning the basic things that every coach should be able to do with any client and I cover all of that in the high caliber coaching code different types of coaching different types of clients uh, different uh, techniques that you must uh, learn and understand and really all the basics of it so my under, my uh, experience with coaches and myself for that matter is that if we're really pretty good with the basics and if we really master those basics uh, that mastery is very is, is a just one little step ahead of that 
or one little step beyond that. Uh, so you master these basics before the eight-week immersion training, you're going to find you're much more comfortable with mastering all the details around a discipline that you're learning. So uh, that's just uh, extra credit. You don't have to do that in, in, in no way, shape, or form. But if you want to, you want to make sure you have access to that stuff, just uh, get in touch with our administrators, and we'll get you into the Quick Start members area uh, before we maybe normally do. And uh, you can start reviewing uh, that course and, and uh, get ahead of the game uh, in your own skills so you perform even better during the eight-week immersion training as well. Now, quick warning, a little surprise here. Uh, actually, several warnings for you. And I don't want to scare you, but uh, I also I want to make sure that you're going into this experience and into Master Coach University in the first immersion training with both eyes open. Uh, anything in life has its ups and its downs. And uh, whether it be marriage or a new career or, um, or uh, just uh, the next stage in your life, and you're maturing as, as a person physically, mentally, spiritually, etc. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the trick, I, I believe, partly, in my opinion, is not to avoid the next step in life or to avoid things that are inevitably going to happen in life, but to at least be aware and go through that and, go and, and begin that experience with both eyes open so you see... Uh, the good and the bad, so to speak, and that'll give you the most powerful place to stand as you move forward. So I'm going to give you some warnings here because there's a ton of excitement and, and, and just uh, bliss sometimes that happens when we're getting started with this. And, uh, and again, from an expectation perspective, I want you to have both sides too because with that kind of excitement and, and uh, that wonderful gift that you're going to receive and be able to give to others as a master coach, uh, it comes with a price. And it comes with a, uh, a series of experiences that uh, I do want to warn you about. So here's a, here are a couple of warnings. The immersion trainings are for mentally healthy people. Uh, so if you feel that you're going through the immersion training so you can fix your brain or that you've got something you've been going through years of therapy for and you're hoping that this immersion training is a thing that's going to fix it, uh, then th going through this training right now is not for you until you get healthy mentally. Uh, or at least you need to decide, even if you do. I mean, we're all mentally unhealthy in some ways, uh, I suppose. We all got our little craziness inside. Um, you got to decide that you're going to be responsible for your mental health and you're going to declare yourself as mentally healthy to us before you go through this uh, immersion training because if you're not mentally healthy um, it can be very painful to go through the very intense training that we provide here um, and uh, and I don't want you to go I, don't, I mean, it's not it's not appropriate for you if you're not mentally healthy again you could be in Master Coach University no matter what uh, it's just that in the immersion trainings you don't want to be in an immersion training when you're mentally unhealthy or unstable or emotionally unhealthy or unstable, for that matter. So just be aware of that. There's plenty of other things that happen in Master Coach University that anybody can experience uh, and that no matter how what your state of mental health is, you should be fine with. This is not that, though. The immersion trainings are, are uh, very different. Uh, they are emotionally intense and challenging. So that's uh, enough said about that. Uh, you may want to quit. No matter how healthy you are emotionally, etc., uh, you may want to quit. So just be aware. I mean, it's sometimes it'll put you in that. I'm not. I didn't create a training and try to make you quit or something like that. Don't don't assume that that's that's what's going on here. It's not. I prepared a training to provide you with exactly what you need to create you as a master coach. So just be aware that may come up, and and it's fine if it comes up. You know that may be natural for you. And then final warning. Master Coach University requires a reasonable time investment for the learning or the skill sets or the results that you're expecting to receive. You know, if you're in an immersion training, you're really going to master a specific discipline of coaching, one of the most important disciplines or one of the most important deliverables that you can provide as a coach. Then, you know, spending about 10 hours a week or so for a period of 8 to 12 weeks, it's pretty reasonable. 
do understand that if there's a new skill or a new piece of knowledge or a new ability or a new result that you're expecting to achieve, that that does take an investment of real time, real energy, sometimes real money, and uh, you don't get something for nothing. So those are your warnings. However, beyond that, I'd offer you one uh, word of assurance or one word of uh, advice or coaching before uh, we uh, complete this video. And this is something that I took on very early on in life uh, from Calvin Coolidge, uh, past president of the U.S. And Calvin Coolidge said, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. So, And that's helped me solve just about all of my problems over time, all the problems I created or that I came upon. Uh, and uh, it'll uh, persistence on your part will help you solve whatever challenges show up in Master Coach University as well. So persist because if you do, you'll have a beautiful and a great gift uh, by the time you uh, get your Master Coach certification and you actually graduate uh, and receive your diploma as a Master Coach, completing Master Coach University. So again, I just acknowledge and honor and appreciate you for making the decision to become a student of Master Coach University, to become a Master Coach. Uh, and I just say that because so many coaches like the idea of having the power to help someone or change their life, uh, connecting deeply with someone, moving somebody forward, kicking their butt and getting them to take action, um, or understanding someone and seeing inside of them, through them, uh, like reading them like an open book, having the ability to understand people like that, having that wisdom uh, and actively using that wisdom to change lives anytime you want at will in almost an effortless way. Uh, tons of coaches and tons of new coaches, tons of people that want to be coaches have that desire. But the desire is just not enough. And most people have the desire and they still never achieve anything as a coach or they never achieve mastery as a coach. And you've made the decision to achieve mastery just by taking this action of being in Master Coach University and enrolling in and becoming a student. And so whatever it took to get you to make that decision may, be, may have been challenging. You'll, you'll need that part of you over the coming weeks and months and years possibly to continue and ultimately have this journey lead you to your destiny as a Master Coach. So I, I know that you're on that journey already if you stay on that road and you use that persistence that uh, Coolidge discussed, then you'll achieve that because nothing can stop you from, uh, from that uh, uh, gift being given to you as long as you stay on the road. So uh, take care and I look forward to meeting you soon uh, during your training sessions. Take care until then.